Paul in Corinth. In our last story, we were able to read the letters written by Paul to the church in Thessalonica. Paul encouraged them to continue in their pursuit of a quiet and peaceful life that honors God. Now we see a new church emerge in one of the darkest cities in the known world, Corinth. The church in Corinth would be birthed through struggle, so much so that Paul would need to remain a year and a half to train them, inspired by the book of Acts. Hello, this is Jack Graham once again with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. At our last time together, we heard how Paul and Silas planted a church in Thessalonica and discipled new believers in order to lead the church forward. They faced opposition and were forced to flee undercover for a night in Berea, where they found Jewish believers who were more open to reasoning through the scriptures to determine what was truly God's word. We then heard how Paul went to Athens and shared the gospel with Greeks in the public square, using relatable, relevant language to introduce them to the God they'd never met. Today, we'll hear how Paul brought light into the dark city of Corinth. He will meet fellow tent makers who would become not only partners in the marketplace, but in mission as well. Despite the sin that abounded in this place, the gospel took hold. Jesus came alive in the hearts of those who received him, and Paul remained many months in order to disciple these brand new Christians. Let's listen now to this reading from the book of Acts. Paul felt the ocean breeze caress his face as he descended into the city of Corinth, This ancient port city was bustling with culture and trade. It was Julius Caesar who had restored the city to its former glory. Its buildings were large and bright, gazing over the ocean. Its streets were busy with trade and business. Yet the city was not for the weak-hearted. Many dangers lurked in the city of Corinth. Its port made it a hub for many dangerous people, and its temple to Aphrodite made it a city fueled by carnal pleasures. Paul knew that Corinth's outward beauty was not to be trusted. It was often said that in order to survive Corinth, one must be brave and unwavering. So Paul walked the city streets, looking for any sign of familiar faces or buildings. He knew the first step was to find like-minded people and seek their protection. Paul walked past the Temple of Aphrodite. Male and female prostitutes lay on the temple steps, beckoning for Paul to draw near. Paul looked away and fixed his gaze towards the docks. There he saw a man thrown overboard with a weight around his neck. The city would take Paul's soul if he was not careful. After a day of searching, Paul met a Jewish couple named Aquila and Priscilla. Claudius had commanded that all Jews residing in Rome be banished, so the two of them found themselves living in Corinth with the other exiles. Paul and Aquila became good friends, since both of them were tent makers by trade. The two of them mended tents together and preached in the nearby synagogues. Soon, Silas and Timothy journeyed to meet Paul. A few weeks had passed, and Paul was becoming well acquainted with some of the Corinthian Jews. Daily, he would speak of Jesus and preach the good news of forgiveness. Yet they would deny him daily. Each day, they would mock him and mock Christ. They would blaspheme against Jesus and curse him. However, the Gentiles were receiving Christ with gladness. So Paul wiped the dust off his robe and lifted his hands, saying, Your blood be on your own heads. From now on, I will turn my attention to the Gentiles. As Paul continued in ministry, many Corinthians came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Prostitutes, sailors, thieves, craftsmen, and Roman guards came together at the feet of Jesus to worship. One night, Paul was tossing and turning in his bed. Sweat beat down his neck. Even the ocean breeze could not cool him down. He was riddled with anxious fear. Fear of the Jews, fear of sinning with the prostitutes, fear of being stabbed or beaten. All of these things rushed upon Paul with great force. So he cried out to God and whispered sweet hymns to comfort him in the night. As Paul drifted off to sleep, the Lord came to him in a dream, saying, Be of good courage, Paul. Keep speaking and do not be silent. I have gone before you and I am with you. No one will attack you. For there are many in this city who belong to me. Calmed by the presence of God, Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half. He would teach the word of God and build up leaders in the Corinthian church. However, there was a dark force arising in the Jews of Corinth. 
they made a united attack against Paul. As he was mending tents near the marketplace, they ambushed him. Paul was once again met with a fury of fists and feet to his face and ribs. He was tackled to the floor and bound. The Jews sacrificed the shalom peace of God for the sake of violence against their brother. So they brought him to the court, hoping to get him sentenced to prison or banished. The Jews brought Paul before Gallio, the proconsul of Achaia. They spat at Paul and pointed, saying, This man is telling people to worship God apart from our traditions. He ought to be punished. Gallio looked down from his high platform. He leaned back from his desk and laughed. <laughs> Are you joking? He scoffed. I thought this was a matter of crime, but it is just your petty Jewish law. Get out of my sight and settle this among yourselves. Livid, the Jews brought a man named Sustin before Gallio and beat him nearly to death. Sustin was also a believer, so they wanted to show Gallio the severity of their crimes. But Gallio was a Roman and couldn't care less about the affairs of the Jews. So the Corinthian church emerged from a dark and wicked city. The church would have to be on guard and alert if it was to survive. Paul knew this and stayed a long time to ensure they were taken care of. However, the Corinthian church would prove to be difficult for Paul. When he left, they would fall prey to different schemes of false teachers and corrupt practices. It would only be through a stiff rebuke from Paul that they would return to their relationship with Jesus. As we begin today's reading, we find Paul in the busy port town of Corinth. It was a place where commerce abounded and so did sin, especially immorality, sexual sin. This was where the temple of Aphrodite was located, and worshipers of this false god indulged in all manner of sexual immorality. It pervaded and perversed the culture and would be a battle the Christians in Corinth would have to fight and be prepared against these temptations. Paul met two Jews, a husband and wife named Aquila and Priscilla. They were tent makers like him, and he soon joined them in the marketplace to support his missionary efforts. As he did in every city, Paul devoted time to sharing the good news of Jesus with both Jews and Gentiles. He went to the synagogue every Sabbath and reasoned through the scriptures to show people who Jesus is and why his claims could be believed. This was a common theme in Paul's ministry, and it reminds us that our faith is not blind acceptance, but reasonable based upon genuine, legitimate truth. God has given us minds with which to reason, and He has revealed Himself through His Word, the Bible, and we can have confidence and trust the Bible and therefore believe and have faith in God and the things that God says in His Word. Soon Paul was joined by Silas and Timothy, and together they continued to share the gospel. But it was tiring work, and day after day, Paul felt the rejection and ridicule that came from religious people, until finally he had had enough. He wrote them off in his mind, resolving to speak only to Gentiles who were open to the gospel. It's a relatable experience. Many times people who are religious, even members of our own family and closest circles, can frustrate us because they reject the truth of Jesus Christ. But don't miss what happened to Paul as we read in Acts 18, verse 9. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent. This is great encouragement for us today. We must not be silent, even in the face of rejection. We can expect rejection and move forward through it. It can be disheartening and disappointing. But we must not be silent in our mission to take the message of Jesus Christ to the world, beginning with those nearby, closest to us, our neighbors, our family and friends, and to the nations. So we heard then that Paul listened to God's words to him and persevered. He stayed in Corinth, teaching and preaching God's word. And the church was growing there, but so was opposition. Finally, the angry religious crowd in opposition to Paul, took him before the Roman governor. They accused him of teaching about a God that wasn't part of their religious traditions. This Roman ruler wasn't interested, really. This wasn't a legal or criminal matter. He sent them away, no doubt frustrated that Paul was free to continue teaching about Jesus. It was a victory, albeit a small one, and one that allowed Paul to remain there discipling believers and growing the church. 
And this was such an important task. The darkness in Corinth was strong, seeping into the society and threatening to poison the burgeoning, growing church. Later, Paul would write two letters to the church in Corinth, urging the believers to turn back to Jesus and root out false teaching and evil practices that had found their way into the church. His words would serve as a reminder to us today to always be vigilant in truth, rejecting the sin and the culture that surrounds us and holding true to our identity and our commitment to Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for today's reading and the reminder that we must never be silent in the face of opposition or rejection, but always speak the truth of your word. May we boldly share the gospel of Jesus Christ to our neighbors and to the nations. As long as we have breath in our lungs, may we keep speaking the name of Jesus and delivering his truth. Amen. My wife, Deb, and I would like to invite you and your family and friends to join us on two very special journeys with Jesus to the Bible lands and to the wonders of Alaska. We are going to be taking a trip to Israel, as we've done many, many times before, April 1st through the 10th, 2024. You'll see all the great places of the Bible, and the Bible will come alive for you as you walk where Jesus walked. Then in Alaska, we will see the wonders of God's creation and the power and the beauty and the majesty of his presence on a cruise, a Bible study cruise, July 6th through the 13th. I will be leading Bible study. We'll be seeing and adventuring all across Alaska with the great sights and sounds of that magnificent place, and we would love to have you. We will worship together, study God's word together, and cruise together all across Alaska. So, whether it is Israel or Alaska or both, we would love to have you. Just go to jackgraham.org or prestonwood.org for information. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.